Welcome to the third episode of Draft Punks. I'm Monty. This is my co-host, Ryan. Hello. And we're, we're going to talk about the NFL Combine. Fuck yeah. It's first day of Hanukkah for NFL football fans. Dude, I'm so excited. This, oh, like, yeah. Finally, we get some just like numbers on these guys. And like really, like is where I can start looking at guys that I don't really know a lot about and I know where to focus yeah. my scouting. Yeah, and honestly, like, let's not just fucking bullshit ourselves. Nobody watches enough college football to know, like, every player and how they play because there's just so many fucking games we can't keep track. Now we get to see them at the best levels. The senior bowl doesn't mean that much to me. I think the combine means a lot more. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these guys aren't seniors, and some of the good seniors, like Sutton, don't even compete, like, so, and nor uh, should they. I would never compete in that shit. Fuck that. I mean, sometimes you need it, but that's a conversation for another day. But um, I um, I really do think it's so helpful, like, for it's for all the teams and for these guys. People downplay the combine and like how much these mean. But I mean, like, when you get guys like, yeah, you get guys like Don Terry Poe. Like coming out here and just doing things that big men shouldn't do, like that's, he's, a, he's, that's, a, he's he's fucking awesome. I love Don Terry Poe. Yeah, I mean he's coming out of fucking Memphis. I didn't fucking watch those, especially back then. I didn't watch Memphis. Like, no, no. I mean, outside of my love for Riley Ferguson, I didn't even watch like any Memphis games. Yeah. I'm sure even if I like if I had an inclination of how good he was before like week ten of last year's football season. I would never watch and then just like maybe it was on. Exactly. So this really gives a chance for these small school guys to show out. And even like the big school guys who didn't really get to like spotlight their talent enough, it shows the kind of ability and why don't you take a chance on them. So mm-hmm. uh yeah, so we're gonna go through by position, uh and just tell you a couple guys that we think really need this or also tell you some guys that I like really just watch. They're going to be fun to watch. Yeah, and just, show it's out. just going to be fucking awesome. So um, we're going to start going across the board like normal and we're going to start with quarterback. Uh, Ryan, yeah. start, us, start us off with your quarterback? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, being a former backyard quarterback myself, you know, I am a pretty That's good a shitty uh, one. Uh, Lost <laughs> your job to me. We'll cut that. <laughs> 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 no, he won't because he's lying. But um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I do want to start off with a FCS quarterback by the name of Kyla Lauletta. If I pronounce it wrong, and he listens, I'm sorry. But for the he's not going to listen. Um, don't fucking hate me for it. He's six three, two hundred fifteen pounds. Um, so first of all, what I uh, what I first said, he's an FCS quarterback. You're gonna need the combine, buddy. Like, you're just going to fucking need it. There's no way you can do poorly at the combine and have your draft stock stay the same. Yeah. And that's, I mean, just for, that's just for starters. I mean, seriously. I mean, like, what was it? Last week we're talking about our, our like, late-round quarterbacks to watch. I didn't, know, I didn't even fucking know who this guy was. And all of a sudden people are talking about him being a second-round pick already. Like, Oh, I guess, yeah, I know. I mean, I guess that's on us not doing enough research. But, I mean, that just shows. Like, these guys just come out of nowhere, and that's you got to prove it now. Yeah, and, like, that's – Another thing, too, about Kyle uh, Lalouette, I'm just going to call him Kyle. We're friends. Um, he didn't have, like, eye-popping stats either. It wasn't like he threw for, like, 5,000 fucking yards in FCS play. He only threw for about 3,800 yards. Granted, he had a good completion perception, but he only had 28 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. Like, that's not – those aren't great numbers, by the way. Yeah. Like, those aren't, like, outstanding fucking numbers. But, I mean, there's reasons why he, he is being, you know, targeted as, per se, projected second round. He needs to not just do well. He needs to stunt on some fucking haters. Yeah. Because I mean, he, he really needs this. I mean, there are going to be people out there watching him. I mean, now with like guys like Sam Darnold, who isn't throwing at the combine. Yeah. With, they're going to look for more uh, people to pick up the slack. Yeah, and they're going to need people to throw, and people the eyes are all going to be on him. I'd like to see what kind of miles per hour they're gonna, he's going to get up there at his throws, see if he's putting zip on it. Yeah. Um, See just how it all everything is. Uh, but speaking of that, what do you think of uh, Darnold's uh, not throwing? Oh, um, for Darnold's not throwing, man, I really, I'm kind of like torn because at the same time, um, I think, well, you know what, he should go throw. Like, don't lose that competitive edge. Like, let them see you right there in plain sight for raw, like their raw vision, because they're not. That's all they're going to see of you. You have no games until the NFL draft. 
And that might leave a little bit of a bad impression on scouts because they want to see you in the flesh. I mean, at the same time, I understand, like, they watched you throw in a fucking game on film. Personally, I think if I were him, I would have thrown. You're a first-round pick. Just go throw the ball. Yeah. You, don't, you don't have to, like, you know, like, you're a first-round pick. You don't have to go crazy. Go throw the ball. Let them see you in the flesh. If you want to take, like, limited reps or whatever, that might be fine. But I don't think it's a huge issue. He, he should do it, though, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I I was definitely against it at first. But the thing is, a lot of quarterbacks, a lot of good quarterbacks have yeah. not thrown at the combine. It's not that he's not going to throw is the thing people don't understand. It's, he's, I'm guessing he's going to throw at his pro day. And that people like that better because you're throwing to your guys. You're throwing to throw you guys that you have chemistry with, that you've thrown with all year. Mm-hmm. That's where you want to show yourself up. And I I. I can respect that. I understand why he why he's not going to try throwing to these random guys at the combine. He's going to go where he's comfortable. That could make him look bad too. I mean, that could yeah. just make him look. Even if like he throws a pretty good ball, and the wide receiver drops it, they might be like, "Ooh, maybe it wasn't that good." And yeah, they're just, it just it'll look a little bit bad. He doesn't mm-hmm. really need that right now as a quarterback coming out of USC, which already has a horrible reputation for quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, like. Granted, you know me, I don't like Josh Allen, but in his senior bowl, when he started throwing to random people, he was getting dropped passes all over the place. I mean, it's because he has a strong yeah. arm, apparently was the issue, but, like, it's not going to look good if you're just people are dropping your passes, so. No, it's not. And, like, and it probably didn't look good at the senior bowl either. I mean, but I, I'm sure NFL scouts can differentiate between the fact that he probably just throws hard. Yeah. I mean, it's a bad thing, though, because yeah, they're really... not catching it, you know. Mm-hmm. But, but, I mean, no, I don't think it's huge. Um, I think... I think he should do it, but I understand. As long as he throws his pro day. If he doesn't throw his pro day, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, I agree. That's um, I so, so my guy I'm going to talk about uh, is Lamar Jackson. I mean, big name. Everybody wants to see him. I mean, if you yeah. talk to exciting. If you talk to the average fan, you'd think Lamar Jackson's going to go first overall in the draft. You talk to <laughs> NFL draft, draft experts, you see that he's supposed to go in like a third round. I think there's some sort of happy medium here. I think, I think he's going to end up being a like late first, uh, early second type pick. But yeah. he could go up higher than that. I mean, if he comes out here, he goes to the draft, he shows up like, Maybe like two fifteen or something gets a shows he has a little bit of weight on his fit. I'm afraid I'm worried about it. I like I, he's. It wouldn't surprise me. He goes up there and shows he's like one ninety five. That wouldn't surprise me at all. He's no, so, I so small. I think me and him, I'm weighing myself earlier today. I'm like one ninety eight. I think he weighs less than me, and I'm five ten. Yeah, he's six three. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he needs to gain a little bit of weight, if we're just being serious. But also, too, I think why... I mean, there is an argument to stats. We can't deny stats. Mm-hmm. But we can like we can kind of cut through the fat of what is bloated and what isn't. And I just don't... I, his footwork bothers me a lot. I don't think he yeah. deserves it. But, that, you know, that's his, his combine can help, though. Like, even if he runs fast. Even if he runs fast. Everyone loves a 40. Even if he just runs fast, but he probably will. Um this could help him big time, for sure. I mean, definitely, yeah. He needs it. I think he needs it. There's a few things I said we should look for. One, um, 40 yard dash. I mean, we you can all argue about how important it is. I think there is a little bit to it, but I also think it's way overblown. But regardless, yeah. you can see those guys like John John Ross, who went top ten, even though he should not have. Like, no. it's it's because he broke Chris Johnson's record. Teams look at the 40 yard dash as much as everyone says it's not important. People look at it and. I don't know what he's gonna run. Um, I could see him probably being like I think four four is where I'd expect him at. But yeah, he, I mean it was pretty good for a quarterback. Yeah, very like, good. Yeah. But if he comes like, out and he runs like a low four three or something like that, that could put him like early first round. Like people could fall in love with that speed. Yeah, um, I mean they definitely. I wouldn't. I would not be surprised at all either. Yeah, I can't wait. The Cardinals took him. It'd be very interesting to see what happens with that. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing is his footwork, like we're talking about. If he can keep a wide base when he's throwing and really shows, just you know, in a practice situation, can he can he keep good footwork, or is that going to really be a problem for him? He's going to have to show it there. Um, tight spirals, tight spirals, and then I also just want to I want to see what kind of miles per hour that they play pull on the gun for him with the ball. 
I feel like that guy can sling it. I feel like he might be up there, like higher than Rosen. I think he he could be putting up ridiculous miles per hour on that ball, and that could be interesting. I mean, I mean that's not this is the all. Time. That's not everything. Like miles per hour is not everything. I mean Logan Logan Thomas is the highest of all time. He nothing. No, he was supposed to be like. I mean, where where did he end up? He finished with the Cardinals, right? He, he went to the Cardinals, and Bruce Arians tried calling some QB magic on him, and it just never worked out. Didn't work. Well, whatever. I think this I mean, this is another guy that this is really going to play into his favor if he can prove that he can play a pocket game. Like, he doesn't scramble. He doesn't make these ridiculous runs against college teams. And that's my, and that's my problem with, with uh, Lamar Jackson. I really do think he has every all the talent in the world to be a good quarterback. I think he has yeah. all the physical traits. I just don't think he'll use them right. I think he'll he, he has sloppy footwork. I don't know if that if he's going to ever fix that. I don't I mean, I'm sure he will to an extent, but not to like like a tight level. And then like he's always going to try to extend the play, I feel like, and she's just going to get killed in the NFL. And at least the fumbles too. Like that yeah. that's just such a drive killer, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a momentum killer, actually, but I I think too that this is this could prove really well for him because of how well he was uh, how well he acclimated in the NCAA. His stats speak for himself that he was a good college player. We can't deny that, but yeah. we, we know that doesn't transition. We know that doesn't always transition. Yeah, um, that's interesting. Um, anyway, so uh, and then the last thing I want to say with quarterbacks is the one uh. A couple other people I want to see a little bit from. I want to see Rosen interview well. I think all this stuff is overblown with him, but he's going to need to go in there, and they're going to ask him if he loves football. They're going to ask him stupid questions, and he's just going to have to deal with it and just show show him that he's a can be a franchise quarterback. Yeah, I don't understand this whole, like, questioning his commitment to the game. Like, he clearly loves the game enough that he studied it so much that, like, he clearly has an affinity for yeah. it. He's I mean, not, like, he doesn't hate football. It's not like his side job. It's not like he's a fucking Uber driver by day and he tries yeah. out football. People, like, try to play it because, like, his dad is, like, one of, the, like, the number one surgeons in the world. Like, it, that just shows he could do anything he wanted and he chose to do football. He's also highly intelligent. I think he was on the honor roll a couple of times. Yes, people don't understand that the, that just because, unlike a lot of other NFL players, that he doesn't need football doesn't mean he doesn't love it. Just because he doesn't yeah, need yeah. it. And I'm sure he could definitely. What did he major in economics? I think. I he think it was business of some sort. Yeah. Yeah, and like I'm sure he would do well because if you remember earlier in the NCAA season, he was a huge proponent for that. Like you take away Alabama's like. Uh, requirements for education mm-hmm. or if you put you implement their actual requirements yeah they're not that team and he exactly. i think and i think i i really agree with them too i was like i 100 percent agree with you and i don't mm-hmm. that's that's a different argument that's when ncaa becomes politics with money and you know how they gain value and venue but rosen could do anything he wants and he could make probably more if not you know not maybe not more but he can make a sizable amount for a less strenuous job and he chose to play football yeah. So. Then the last person I want to mention, I know I've brought up miles per hour in these balls, but I really do think that's a cool thing to see for their arm strength. That's like a somewhat newer thing that they've been keeping track of it. I always like looking at it. And um, I think the record's 59 or 60 miles per hour. I heard Logan, uh, Logan sorry, I heard that uh, Josh Allen was throwing 65 at the senior bowl. So really? I, I'm going to be interested when he's trying to put everything he has behind it in the combine, see what kind of numbers he's putting up. His, his numbers are going to be crazy, I think. Yeah, and that's going to help him a lot. That could move him into the number one pick of the Browns. Like, so for sure. Five. People are, somebody could fall in love with that, for sure. I mean, I won't, but... No, I, I don't buy it. I don't buy it one bit. I don't, hate, I don't hate him at all. As we said last night, I think he's just a prospect that you need to, t- you need to draft carefully. Mm-hmm. Like, you need to draft with a good team. You can't draft him... Like, the Browns should not draft him. Yeah. Stay away for both of your sakes. I agree. But, um, um, so, okay. let's go ahead and move on to running back. Yeah. And I'm excited to hear what you have to say about your running back. 
Is yeah, I mean, he's a pretty prolific player, and I think he's not getting some bad pre-draft juju because of his old teammate, Donald Pumphrey. So San Diego State, my guy is Rashad Penny. He is from San Diego State. He had a bananas crazy year. He ran for 2,200 yards, 2,248 yards, technically, with 23 touchdowns. Um, those are really eye-popping stats, and I think a lot of people are correlating his eye-popping stats with Donald Pumphrey's eye-popping stats. But you have exactly. to remember, and I, but like that, they're not the same. They're they're not the same because Rash- Donald Pumphrey was like five nine, like one eighty. But you gotta think: is it a product of the system? Is this? I mean, it's just oh, no, 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 no. It's it definitely something to consider. But when people were like, "Oh, he's just gonna be like just like Donald Pumphrey," he's not. He's yeah. not. He's a running. He's an NFL size running back, not a high school size running back. It's but it true. could it could very well be a product of the system. But there's also question marks about him being able to catch. Like, but I do what you're saying. Like, he has the size of an NFL running back, unlike Donald Pumphrey. No, exactly. And like, and I think the best comparison for him, um, I don't know how well he's going to do. I think he could really help a team if you draft him, maybe three to four. I would say his a good comparison for him might be someone like. Uh, Maybe like Buck Allen, maybe Corey Clement from the Eagles, um, a, Don- a Donald Pumphrey teammate. Um, maybe kind of like a, maybe like a better Matt Asiata. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I really like him. I don't. I I think he needs the combine though to break away from that stigma of Donald Pumphrey. Though he needs to break from because for so long, for three years, they were teammates together. They were like the lightning and thunder, whatever, whatever it is. Thunder. Whatever the phrase is, the rain and lightning. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think. I, what, what do you think about uh, Rashad Penny? I I love him, and I think he can slip into the second round I, with a good combine, with a good combine, and he has to show that he can catch the fucking ball on a slant yeah. route because that's the problem. I would love to see him catch the ball a little bit the combine to see what he can show. Um, I think he's a two down back. There's nothing wrong with that. There's still a place in this league for it, but I mean, it's not. People don't want it as much. I do think that um, if he shows the athleticism that and some catching ability, he could easily find himself in the second round. I mean, he does ha- have uh, a lot of good film. I guess he's just really he's got to go in there. And he's got to show this, like this explosiveness that he has in the film. He's got to he's got to back that up at the combine. Yeah, and also too, I mean, kind of like a runner like him, he needs to prove that he is not just a guy that runs into people and falls over. He mm-hmm. can be the. I think a big his cuts were pretty bad on the film. I did watch a little bit of film with him. His cuts were not great. Yeah. Um, so if he can work maybe that three cone drill. Um, that's going to really help him out a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think just overall catching the ball, showing a competency catching the ball from other QB prospects is a good thing for him. Those are just the big two things I have. Make sure you can show that you're agile enough. Make sure you're fast. Like, don't run anywhere near a 4-6. Maybe 4-5. Yeah. Four, four, I would say, like, a 4-5 is your healthy range for you. Yeah, people I mean, know you're not, you're not a burner. We know that. Yeah, and running backs aren't expected to run, like, a fast 40s. And, like, no. but people don't understand is people every year see these guys. Now, I mean, like every year they, they run like slower, like four or five forties. It's not common for these guys to be run four, 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 threes. It's not like Those, that's that cornerback shit. Like you yeah. don't need to run. It's three cone. Everybody needs to understand. We got to look at three cone. Christian McCaffrey's three cone blew me away last year, which is why I was so high in him. I still think he's going to be great, but, um, he did reasonably well. He didn't do bad. Yeah, like, he's just a good receiving back. He needs to show yeah. he can be a, he he'd be a three down back, which I don't know it, what what he'll do about that. But regardless, I mean, John Stewart's gone. They just released him today. Mm-hmm. Three three cone drills are very very important to me. I it just shows your explosiveness through cuts, and that's why um, my guy that I was talk I want to talk about with Nick Chubb. Um, that's going to be really important for him because that guy, he was a guy that was talked in the same breath as Leonard Fournette, Christian yeah. McCaffrey. I mean, he was right there, and he tore his ACL. And sucks. Just, sucks. He's, he's still very good. He's still like, no, no, I'm saying that, that sucks. I know. I know what you meant. I'm sorry. I, I played it off wrong. But, yeah, he it does suck. It really does. But, like, he's a very good player still. But, um. Figured out how to get it without having it paid for two weeks. Stick with the people signed up. So, 
and the wine thought he had to pay, but I don't need him anymore because I got a coupon from Hava. He's a very good player. Uh, yeah, Crest ready. He's a very good player, but like I just feel like he's lost his burst after this ACL injury. He just can't get these cuts like he used to be. I really think it limits him. It makes him more of a two-down back. It really just makes him a north and south runner. He's going to have to be a power back when he could have been an all-around like Todd Gurley level like player. I really think he had that type of ceiling. But he yeah, just... no, I, I think so too. And I remember people were like, Saying that if he came out, he would have been taken within the likes of not not Leonard Fournette because Leonard Fournette was the Ezekiel Elliott of the but, Ezekiel Elliott. But people but were he, putting him ahead of McCaffrey and stuff like. Yeah, no, absolutely. They were saying like if Nick Chubb went out, like, and I'm sure like he would have been taken and would have been taken higher in that regard. I like Nick Chubb a lot, and I think he has a lot to prove to show that he came back from that injury. It was one thing to prove it in college, especially when you're taking half the load off with Sony Michael as well. Or yeah, Michelle, or Michelle, I think. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if you, yeah, if if he can come out here though and show us at the combine and really show his explosiveness, mm. then that could be honestly. I don't see it happening. But if he he puts up good numbers, he could get himself back in the first round, like he should should have been. But I don't see that. Yeah. Happening. And you know what? He could be a really good take for teams later in the rounds too. First rounds. You know what could happen? Maybe the Steelers take him. Maybe the Steelers grab him. I if don't they know. don't, if they don't, if they don't have uh, Le'Veon Bell, but other teams do. I, I don't think a team within the top twenty are going to take a risk on him. The thing is about like the Steelers is they have that guy already in James Conner. Like if Nick Chubb can't show this cut, this a cutting ability, that's who he is. He is like a power back. They need somebody who can complement him, and that's yeah. not Nick Chubb if he can if he can't prove this athleticism but i guess i mean in the situation that he does i don't know it's tough but i really do think he has a lot to prove yeah and i think and i think he will too i think he i think he'll do it yeah um i'm I'm looking forward to seeing him yeah and i guess the only other person i wanted to mention is man he has nothing to prove to be honest but i am so so excited to see what Saquon Barkley does in this. Oh in yeah, Scotland. absolutely. I mean, like you know, he's the best running back there. But I think he can really solidify himself. He can put himself like maybe the Browns are looking for that justification to have a running back as their first overall pick. He can make this justification. He just fucking balls out, but he doesn't even have to really. Everyone knows how good he is. Yeah, he can put himself in that first pick, especially like, like we. I talked to you about this a little bit, and we'll talk about this when I believe next week we're going to rebuild the Giants. We're just going to mm-hmm. do a. We are. Combine today, but when we rebuild the Giants next week, I'll give you some of my insight as a Giants fan. But right now, a lot of people think they're going to pick Saquon Barkley, and the Browns. It, yeah. If the Browns, if they fall in love with these numbers and how good he looks on top of this tape, they might not want to lose him. Giants or Colts, they might just be like, "Fuck it, let's get him." That's the two. Yep, um, I couldn't blame them. I mean, that was our pick for him. That's what we said they should do. Yeah, I mean, and I think, I mean, that's why we're taking having the Browns take him one. Mm-hmm. Let's, and I, I, thought, I still think they should. I don't care. If, I don't care if Shaquan Barkley doesn't even go to the combine. You should take him number one. Yeah, I don't care if you. Don't, I don't care if you don't get Kirk Cousins. Like, get take Shaquan Barkley. Absolutely, yeah. But, um, so, I think, yeah. I, I, I think he can put himself in the first. And obviously, he has nothing to prove, except for he just needs. He doesn't even need to dominate, but even if he doesn't put up the best numbers, everyone knows how good he is in the flesh. Mm-hmm. So I think he'll be fine. One of those guys that doesn't need the combine, but it's just going to be so fun to watch him go. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited for that, man. Yeah, me too. And then, so so um, let's talk about the wide receiver group. Tell me about uh, your guy. I'd love to. Um, I got my dude Jalen Scott from New Mexico State University. That is not a fake university. It's a real one. <laughs> um, he is a tall 6'5", but he is 215 pounds. A lot of big guys in this draft. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, he needs the bulk up, though. 215 at 6'5", is, mm-hmm. like, frail. Yeah. But So, anyway, he has a big propensity to make a good window for his QB. 
um, because he's just such a large catch radius. He also has a really. I'm looking for his his, his jumping ability is really going to be proven. Yeah. He, he, yeah. I mean, he's he needs this. But when I was watching film on him, he contests balls in the air, jumps up and like a motherfucker. And now they need to like see how well he can do as a physical specimen. Little gerbil. Um, did you really did you, did you really hear of him until I brought him up, Jalen Scott? No, I mean I've heard about. A thousand six five wide receivers in this draft six four. There's a lot of yeah. tall guys, like I said. But you brought up a good point. Um, I it really goes for running back too. I'm really excited also to see these jumping numbers. I think those are really important for explosiveness. I think yeah. uh, oh, yeah. wide receiver especially wide receiver and defensive back because you really do use your jumping ability. But like your explosiveness can be really shown out of those broad jumps and those vertical jumps and. I would love to see some of these wide receivers get up to like 42 inches and stuff like that. Absolutely, yeah, and that just you know that will help an NFL team. That will make them. They'll kind of justify the risk of maybe taking their receiver a little earlier. Yeah, um, I mean, like maybe in the third round, he's only predicted to be a four to six round. But if he stunts at the combine, and so the things he has to work on, his quickness isn't good. But you can work on that as a wide receiver. You, you can show in the combine that you worked in that in the offseason. And then maybe because he has like a wiry body, like yeah. kind of clunky, like he's just trying on for the first time. But he needs to work on that. And a lot of like a lot of his tang- his good tangibles are not tested in the combine besides jumping. Mm. So he needs to because they're not going to have him get heavy contest one on two guys and jump ball for it because um, he times the ball very well. So as long as he catches everything his way that can be caught. He'll be fine. I think he can slip in the third round with good agility numbers that will show that he can maybe break off because he can't break off a vertical route. He doesn't have that second gear that really kind of chug, chug, yeah. chug, 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 chug. I was so about I to say that. that. If you don't, you either got to show you have agility or you show you got speed because, mm-hmm. especially at 215, you're not going to body anybody. Like, I know you got the 6'5, you got that jumping, but you need to have one of the two. You need to be able to break away from these guys, and it's got to either be with some quick moves or you got to be able to just run straight and hope you can beat them down the field. Yeah, and just think about who's covering you, man. Because I remember when I was watching the film, and at first I was like, wow, he, for, a, for a bigger dude, or for a Six five guy at two fifteen. He really doesn't get pushed around that much. He's pretty. And I was like, well, it is a lower conference. Like they're not in the NFL. A linebacker will stick you. Like it'll stick you hard too. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm be, not. I, I'm excited for him, but he does need some stuff to work on. To be honest, man, this draft might be the most like six three plus guys I might have ever seen at wide receiver. Uh, it's nuts how many I'm looking into. I'm really excited to see what these guys bring. You could end up finding a Calvin Johnson talent come out of nowhere with these guys just because you find, like, if one of these guys with this kind of height come out and just show that they're freak athletes, like, you might just find some guy who gets slips into, like, like might become the – none of these wide receivers I love. You can find one of these random guys might end up be, like, the top 10 pick and beat and beat out every single guy. If they could just come in here, run like a four, three and get like a good vertical. I wouldn't surprise me with all these guys. Or one of those guys like surprise us with that. I mean, let's be honest, like Calvin Johnson, a lot of his skill came from his size and not that he wasn't talented, but he was six, five and he ran like a fucking cornerback. I mean, he's four yeah. low fours. He had a very big hands, but like, that's why when people always ask like, who do you think is the more talented receiver, Antonio Brown or Calvin Johnson? You can probably give it to Antonio Brown. Yeah, Calvin Johnson's five just ten. a physical freak. Yeah, he's he's a physical, and it's not taking away from how well he catches or reads balls. Because there are those guys who are six six and did not do as well. He's just a fast fucking dude. Mm-hmm. He's just he was hard. He nature. couldn't be good. He couldn't be bad. That's yeah. pretty much what it is. And but. it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I'm not expecting a Calvin Johnson out of this draft, but like, you know, just like that type of like just freak of nature would like not to his extent but just like a lesser level like i could just see it come out of nowhere with how many of these big guys are out here and how like fast these guys some of these guys are i could just see somebody just surprises like number one i mean granted his injuries have killed him but kevin white surprised everybody a couple years ago when he came out here he ran like a four three at six five and like a big receiver like 
he really solidified himself. Not that he wasn't already a good college receiver, but that blew everyone away. And so that just goes to show you don't need to see it on tape to really like show that you have those that speed. Yeah, and by the way, shout out to the Bears fans because you always say Kevin White's this, this, and that. The Bears were a hundred percent justified in taking Kevin White. Yeah, like they were. They there was not a bad pick. It's an unfortunate situation that he a lot keeps of injuries. Yep, and he's losing confidence. I think he's done. But I mean, I don't blame him. It's a shame minute. too because like yeah. he is fucking. He was good back in the day, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember watching him in West Virginia, and I was excited to see him. I mean, yeah. I didn't want to. I didn't want him to beat the Lions. But mm-hmm. I was excited to see him compete with the Lions and maybe tear an ACL or two here or there. Yeah. I mean, as a student here, I just remember stand, being in the stands and just seeing him make these insane catches and just being amazed. Freak, man. And that confidence thing, too. We talked about it a, lot, a little bit last episode. But the confidence thing is big for him. and He's he's probably lost it. I mean, three times. Like, that confidence Jesus is important. Christ. Christ. We're talking about that with quarterbacks. But, like, it is just, important. Just, for just at a professional playing level. Like, if I drop my phone twice in a day, I got to call off work. Like, I'm, I'm not confident enough to go into work and do anything. Mm-hmm. That's it. But um, I think also, too, the physical freaks, just they're going to start dominating the league. Anyway, who do you got for wide receiver? All right, so let me tell you about my guy. I got uh, Antonio Callaway. He's um, from Florida. A lot of you guys might not know of him. He didn't have a great year this year. Um. He's gotten a lot of off-field problems, which has restricted his time on the field. Um, going into this year, though, there's talks about him being a little breakaway as like the number one wide receiver. He's a freak athlete. I mean, obviously the Florida comparison makes it easy, but I hear a lot of Percy Harvin comparisons for him. Like, he's a freak athlete. He's so fast. Um, he gave Minka Fitzpatrick a lot of issues. Uh, mm couple years ago in the SEC championship. I mean, we know how good Mink is. Uh, he's, a, Mink, he's, just, uh, he's just electric. I mean, he is supposed to – he might not even get drafted right now. But if he can come out here, run a, like a 4-2, and really just stunt on this combine, he could – people are going to get him purely just to be a returner for them in that case. Like, oh, yeah. he'll get picked. Yeah, and also too. I mean, like you can utilize that in an offense too. I mean, you can you see how mm-hmm. offensive coordinators are getting smarter, and they're starting to be like, well, I can put him here and this guy here. Um, I think that's that's very important to an offense. Where where is his round prediction now? Um, seventh to undrafted. Just what they're saying. Seventh to undrafted. I mean, if you can, if he stunts at the combine, man, it might be worth taking him in the six. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, he could really raise the stock if, I mean, but he needs to do a lot of things well. He needs to catch the ball well. He needs to have a great measurables. And then he needs to, he needs to explain all these issues he's had at Florida in his interviews. I mean, there's a lot that goes into this. I, I don't know. How, I really don't know how high his ceiling is as far as a draft pick. I really can't tell you. But I'll tell you, he has probably, like, First round athletic ability. Just can you put everything else together? Um, that's not to say that he'll ever be the first round pick, but just athletically, he is going to blow people out of the water. I think this guy could end up being the best, uh, the best producer at this combine. I could see him challenging Chris Johnson's record. Well, not, I mean, sorry, John Ross's records. Yeah, I was um, gonna say you are wrong, yeah. my friend. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he'll beat it, but I mean, that's like one guy to watch out for every year. You got to watch it. I don't know if people are going to still do that now. It's broken now. It's kind of like, eh, we're past that. But <laughs> I mean, but I think something like that, like just this is, I think a guy like Gallon is the reason that we have the combine yeah, well. to really prove your athletic ability. Um, and that just the, it, it speaks for my. I mean, you guys talk like Collar. not you guys, but people talk about how what about they, it's brought up all the time other athletes joining football. And it's because athleticism is such a huge attribute to have. So when you have that athletic ability and are pretty decent at football with a little bit of character issues, and also, too, maybe those character issues can get kind of scrushed out by an NFL coach. You see how NFL coaches know how to work with people. Hopefully he goes to the right coach. Hopefully he gets drafted, and I hope he does well. Yeah, I mean, it's just... 
of if teams are going to want to take a chance on him. He's going to, I just, he needs to blow people away. He needs a team to want to take a chance on him. Tyreek Hill had his issues in, uh, in college and yeah. somebody took and a chance the violence, on him. Dude. Yeah. Yep. That wasn't, that wasn't like just like, he no. didn't just smoke pot in his dorm. Yeah. I mean, like Callaway, Callaway just drug, weed and shit like that. Uh, I mean, that's like, I, Ty- Tyreek Hill has had, is a big problem, and they took a chance on him. He hasn't been a problem for him. He hasn't been a headache. He's been a good player. Um, we'll have to see what Cal. We'll have to see what Callaway does. Um, hopefully, I really hopefully think, he stunts. I'm so I'm hoping. Uh, How far do you think he falls? Or descends? A se- like, like ascends or descends? How far down in the draft? How? <laughs> 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 as close guy. as he Fuck can to that. the number one. <laughs> that is not my subject. Um, I thought it was so, side note. I thought it was so funny that in high school everyone thought I was like the fucking smart kid. Like I couldn't pass like basic shit. But uh, this is why, as close as he could to the first overall pick. I'm not gonna use words anymore. How close to the first overall pick? What round do you think he goes to that isn't the seventh round? Fifth. Best case scenario, I think. Yeah, okay. All right. Cool. No more, no more ascension and descension words. That's my guess. Um, okay. All right. That, that, that's a pretty safe spot, too, especially for a team that thinks that if his interview went well. Maybe, a com- maybe like a compensation fourth or something. Okay. All right. I mean, that'd be good. So if he just really, he's got a really, really stunt. But he's got to really stunt. He's got, and the team's got to be comfortable in taking him. Uh, he definitely has inconsistent hands. His routes are, you know, not perfect. But he's an athlete, and so that's something. That's something. what counts, man. Yep. That's what counts. That's what um, fucking counts. So, let's go ahead and move on to uh, the tight end position. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would love to kick that one off. So I am taking a kind of speedster out of Penn State, who I got to see. Well, I'm a Michigan fan watching Big Ten football. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski, um, the tight end, 6'4", 242. Uh, he's got 10-inch hands. So, you know, I like those hands. Those big hands, man. Not Charlie's that, uncle. Not that big, though. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not that big, but they're, they're decently sized. They're not small, tiny baby hands. Yeah. Um, he proved, so he had nine touchdowns, 560 yards. So what he is going to have to prove at the combine to break him out of this kind of, well, he's a tight end, we'll say to the third, fourth round kind of mutt. Um, it's, again, it's his jumps, it's verticals, and his agility, too, because he is seen as one of the more faster tight ends. Um, I was reading some news today that he could run a potential 4-6, which is really good for a tight end um, at a 6'4", or 6'5", 6'4", 242 pounds. So... I think they're really going to focus on this vertical. That's what you have to focus on with mm. this guy. Because um, that's how he, at Penn State, watching the film, a lot of his catches, a lot of his receptions, a lot of his money makers, and even drawing people off coverage was because he could really bring down and have a big catch radius with his, how high he could jump. So it's important that he highlights that because for the tight ends, a lot of their intangibles are not shown at the combine. You don't see him fucking maul a linebacker down to the ground. You don't see him in physical contact. You don't see him in the red zone with a one in, with a one yard slant. So he has to prove that he can one break away from the pack, literally, in his forty time and his vertical. Um, and again, show show your show your body radius, man. Make yeah. him reach and create that little window for the QBs. I mean, I do think uh, people are really going to be looking the 40s guy, especially after like how Evan Ingram came out last year, killed it in the combine, and had such a big rookie year, which is very uncharacteristic of tight ends. They usually take a couple years to develop, and guy, a guy like Evan Ingram has showed that. I think there's going to be more teams want to get these like almost Aaron like Hernandez slots. Has. Exactly. Yeah. Aaron Hernandez, you know, without like the murder and then. <laughs> without the murder and situation. suicide. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That was so not cool. Was that on, was that on his draft records? Maybe kill someone. We'll I, think, take him. I think there was stuff along the lines, honestly. You know, the best part about that is, is that he can't say anything to us because he's dead. And we will never, we can talk as much as we want. Yeah, fight um, me, Aaron Hernandez, you pussy. <laughs> we say that now, but if zombie Aaron Hernandez shows up, I'll shoot him. He'll kill me. He's done it before. Up. 
he'll he'll give me a swirly. <laughs> I don't think that's what he was doing in prison. <laughs> you sure? It's a maximum security prison. Bearing people wedgies and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Is that Aaron Hernandez? Yeah, watch out. If he gives swirlies. Oh, no. I think uh, Aaron Hernandez was taking it in the butt, but I don't know. He was I a, know. He's got a nice tight end. He does. He's a tight end, tight ass. You know, I can't. can't find <laughs> <him there. laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> ridiculous. Um, but yeah, um, I'm interested. I I want to see how he does. I also my guy I got is a uh, Hayden Hurst from uh, South Carolina, six five two fifty. All right, little, little uh, bigger bodied. Yeah, he's a big he's a bigger bodied guy. Uh, I think he has a size to block. He actually he's a little bit of an older guy. He's gonna be about twenty five years old. Did he go to JUCO or? He actually was uh, drafted in the 17th round by the Pittsburgh Pirates, and he played baseball oh. for a couple of years. Um, I've always seen this story before, and it happens. Mm-hmm. He, uh, he had Tommy John surgery when he was in eighth grade. Ooh. Yeah. I didn't know that was allowed. Yeah. It, did. <laughs> it didn't really Sucks. ever work out for him, but uh, he's a crazy athlete. Um, he really is just like – like just a grown man out there. He really like a twenty five year old age against these college kids really shows he is just very athletic. Um I mean that shows I mean he's a two sport athlete. I think that yeah. plays into it. Uh he has he's good hands. I really do think uh he is somebody who could do really well at this combine and just be an all-around uh, athlete and do well in all the drills. They may not kill one necessary one. He's not going to be like ridiculous in the 40-yard dash. He's not going to be like ridiculous in the three-cone. But I think he's going to be a top performer among his position on a lot of things. And I think uh, he is – I don't think he'll find himself in the first round. But I think he could push because of his age. But I think he could push himself to the top of the second. I mean – that's not bad at all, and especially, too, I think what's really detrimental, too, uh, I mean, what I would find uh, his development is that he keeps his professionalism steady. I mean, he's already been in, um, exposed to professional sports. This isn't his first rodeo of getting signed and having an agent mm-hmm. and having deadlines to meet and meetings to go to and being expected to be to act like a paid professional. So I think he's... I think he's going to come in as a seasoned guy. He's not going to be a veteran by any standard, of course, but, but just having that experience and the no, age factor, too, I, could help him in the interviews. I think that's a great point, Ryan, because um, he really, I think, is a kind of guy who can be a leader on your team right away. Yeah. Um, I think he has that maturity. I mean, for example, he was the only uh, sophomore in South Carolina history to become a team captain. Yeah, which like that just speaks to it that like usually that just doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there have been 23 year old sophomores and they just probably maybe. <laughs> no, I wouldn't be surprised. Guys who go to JUCO, I yeah. mean, you know, maybe they get academically. Like my boy uh, Jalen Scott didn't get to play for like two years because he was like, borderline an idiot. I guess I don't know what the word is. <laughs> it's mentally, mentally broken. I have no idea. Yeah. But um, no, I think I think that's really gonna set it. I think it's going to really set him apart in his interviews, too. Yeah. Like in his interviews, he'll speak well. Because I think for the MLB draft, I think you do have to go to some interviews if a team is interested in drafting. You know, yeah. I assume. And, and they do a lot they talk of, to you. They do a lot of training of those guys in MLB where they, they really just um, try to look, teach them how to deal with media, which, I mean, honestly, I think kind of turns a lot of these baseball players into kind of boring robots in interviews. But, like, it's a still... Little bit, but baseball's a boring game. So. Yeah. <laughs> But, I like um, baseball too. It's kind of yeah, baseball, it's just, you're, you're not going to get the same quotes out of baseball players. You're not going to get the same quotes out of this guy. I mean, that's he's a good guy to have in the locker room, and I think that's I think he's going to interview well. I don't even think that's a question to me. Yeah, he's going to set him, he's going to set him apart because you know we see all the time that character issues do more and more get yourself involved. I mean, we were just talking about Aaron Hernandez. It's char- characters. Maybe I'm not saying it's like half these guys are going to go murder people. But characters are are a factor, and I think if he can really kind of squash that bug, he doesn't have any. 
that's what's going to be one return in the draft. So, let alone his, his free. Spotlight last week, Dallas Goddard. He's, yeah. he's going to stunt, man. He is going to This is his. Stunt. This is his to take. I don't think he's going to. I don't want to. I didn't like. He wasn't going to be my guy that's going to raise his stock because you're going to know who Dallas Goddard is regardless of this combine. He's a freak yeah. athlete. He will raise his stock. I honestly do think that. But, like, um, it's just going to be him proving what he's shown on tape, and that's just all it is. Yeah, and I, I wonder if he doesn't do as well as expected. I wonder if that hurts him. It definitely small definitely staff. could because they could just say, well, he looks so good because of his competition, which might be warranted. I don't know. Yeah, there's some credence to that. And I don't want to invest too much time into his combine, but I think he needs – he doesn't need to be the best tight end, by the way. He needs to be consistent. He just needs good, to sh- consistent numbers. He needs to show what he, he's done on tape, which I think he will. I think he'll do more than that. I think he's no, going to so stop yeah, yeah, personally, I think he's good. I think he's gonna be the best tight end at the combine, numbers I wise. I so. agree. Um, and then the other great tight end in this draft, and Mark Andrews. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've heard a lot about how he's not that athletic. Granted, he came in Oklahoma as a wide receiver, so I don't know. I don't think he's gonna struggle, but I have heard some worries from people. I heard he's a little bit stiff. So let's take a look at that three cone about a week from now. Uh, when all these guys go, for just so you guys know, it's going to be starting Friday, and then the last will be Monday as far as the uh, drills. Uh, D-backs ended on Monday. so. But uh, I, I mean, do... Mark Andrews has something to prove for sure coming out yeah. as a wider team. But Definitely you have to does. look at it too. Um, like Devin Funches was a tight end turned receiver, so... They can't make this transition. It's, it's the opposite, though, in this case. <laughs> no, 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 no. I understand. That, like, yeah. The transition is possible. Yeah. I think it's harder to go to a tight end position. But I think Devin Funches, remember, he helped his draft stock by just doing well at the combine. And but I yeah. think Mark Andrews needs to prove a lot. And it's not saying that he's not a second-round talent or anything. He's not a first-round talent. He but, needs uh, to prove that he is – an Evan Ingram type slot uh, tight end, and yeah. not a Jason Morrow slot right, tight end. Yeah, and nothing against Jason Morrow. Um, it's pretty bad. I love them coming out, but he's pretty bad. Yeah, no, not the best man. I think that Big Twelve numbers really blew him up, and I mean that's more dangerous. It's something you got to worry about too. Yeah, and just the transitional thing too, but. Um, it is what it is. We'll see what the tight I'm excited. I think the tight ends are my favorite to see of this combine. So, yeah, I agree. But let's go ahead and move on to off to the offensive line. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, my big boy is Braden Smith. Um, he's a guard for Auburn. I'm going to pretend I know a lot about these offensive linemen. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know them? You didn't, you didn't play together at Massac? Yeah, no. Yeah, Braden Smith went to Massac High School. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, shout out to him too, by the way. For every rep he puts up on the bench press, he is donating to Autism Speaks. Yeah, it's like that thing that's like a technical oxymoron or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah. Not an oxymoron. I, I don't know the fucking word for it. I don't know. Like I've heard of I've heard of the charity. <laughs> it's like supposed to bring light to like the troubles of. Autism. I think that's really good of him, especially at a level of Auburn. Um, so he, because he could just be like, I don't fucking care about these kids. <laughs> I'm like, I think it's cool. Um, so I got to look out for him. Six three, six six, three hundred and three pounds. Um, I think he's gonna be a monster on the bench press. Vertical jump, thirty three. That's what I'm, that's what I'm predicting. Um, I know we always talk about the bench press is overblown, but that doesn't stop teams from looking at it and overanalyzing it. And I think he's going to fucking stack up some pounds in the bench press. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think the bench press is completely overblown. I really think it's almost a useless uh, to evaluate, to be completely honest. I really see no point in it. I'd love to see these guys hang clean or squat or something. But, I mean, that's where you show the explosiveness and the lower 
body strength of these guys, I think that would be huge for scouting. But at the same time, they don't do it because that's how guys get hurt, and that's exactly why they don't do it. Yeah, too. So, I mean, I think for the most part, though, he does need the combine. Mm -hmm. I think he does need the combine. Um, It's not that his intangibles are lacking or he wasn't, he was at a bad school and he played good talent. He stopped good talent on a good team. He just needs to prove that he can be that guy that you're looking to take a little bit in the draft. He's not a first round pick by any man, but I think he needs the combine just being that interior guard. That's where you kind of make or break yourself. And I think he's going to make the most noise at the bench press. All right. So we'll have to see. Um, we will have to right. see. So for my guy, I'm going to go East West Shrine game right now. Get some uh, Keen Peel name right now. Darius Dactarius. So this guy named is Chukawuma Okora Four. It's a not, fake name. Not, not Oka Four. Okora Four. You made that up. <laughs> <laughs> right here. It's fucking fake. I don't care. <laughs> Chukawuma. So Chukawuma. 6'6", 330 pounds, and plays offensive tackle for Western Michigan. All right. Western Michigan is getting a lot of love right now. Yeah, they are. With the NFL draft. Mm -hmm. Um, He is a very good athlete from what I can see. Um, I really think that he has good size already. He's thick. Um, He really – With two C's. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he really has a lot he could show, but like he's gonna need to not just come out and look like a fat piece of shit. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> that's gotta be the hardest thing an O lineman has ever done. Yeah, go out there and don't look fat. Are you, are you fucking kidding? I'm Why are you giving such a fucking pounds? tight shirt? <laughs> <laughs> the under armor shirts. They need to give him like Pizza Hut shirts. Drape it down. You can see my nutsack in these shorts. <laughs> like, like, like the spandex, like the compression shorts. You gotta give them those fucking, like, those loose-ass clothes they used to wear, like, in, like, 2004. <laughs> yeah. That's when I thought the line is shined. <laughs> like the cloth shorts. <laughs> now, now it's just literally just, like, skin-tight spandex. Just all these off-the-linemen. Damn, this sucks so all, like, the receivers... How do I look? Yeah, they're just like they got like all these muscles going out. <laughs> Poor offensive lineman. Yeah, just make sure you don't look fat. We do a forty-yard dash is just boob. Don't make sure. Make sure your boobs don't bounce too much. Are you kidding? <laughs> make sure you're on a four-eight. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, you don't want to come out and look like uh, like Andre Smith did. Like, granted, he got picked in the first round, but he got so much shit when he came out. He was like. He ran like a five four, like <laughs> little fat boy. Yeah, he just he comes from too small of a school. He needs to come out there. I mean, I'll tell you honestly, forty yard dash may have the biggest effect on offensive linemen than any other position. And at least in my mind, that that's what I would see the most. Because like when guys come out uh, that big and run that fast, that and like defensive tackles, like that impresses me the most. When I see those out of those guys, that just shows me athleticism. And I love the three cone drills and all that. That's big too. But just when I see that four year dash and I see how fast I see those big men moving, I'm like, I want that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no, it's true though, especially in like a kind of a revolutionary, not revolutionary NFL playing scheme. But you want your offensive line to be able to move. You don't want them to just be rock bodies, man. So it's good to have them be able to yeah. move with your running back. And they're not going to. You know, those poles or kind of just follow up and lead mm-hmm. for follow on blocks, you know. So I'd like, I would like to see him get a good bench press, um, show the strength. I don't need to see him put the top one. I don't think it means anything about the top one. I think it just meant you spent too much time in your upper body, to be honest. Um, yeah. I, I'd like to see him put up a good one. And I would like to see him run well. I'd like to see a good vertical jump. Like comparably for guys his size, I think that would that would show his explosiveness a little bit. Will be a broad jump. So, it shows some athleticism. Yeah, I just know. want to see some athleticism at him. Um, his form's not perfect; he needs to be worked with. But I mean, he's developmental. I think that uh, 
I think he's a guy who could really help his stock by showing he's an athlete as well as a size. Yeah, not only just coming from the MAC too. Just any of those conferences, you need to show up at the combine. It's kind of like going to the interview. You know, a bunch of people going to the interview. Maybe some can get away with a uh, button up and a tie. He's got to wear his full three piece suit. Yeah, you know, he's got to he's got to get it, man. Just coming from that conference already, you have to be you have to be fucking ready. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that he could put himself in the first round for good enough combine. But I doubt that will be happen. But I do think he has enough tape and size that if he ran well, he could he could fall back in the first. But so back in the first, I mean, what team would really necessarily take him to reach? Though is my question. Patriots, maybe. Yeah, why not? I mean, they Probably they lose Nate Solder. Yeah, Nate Solder's gone, right? I mean, I don't think he's That's coming likely. back. Yeah. I don't. I don't think he's coming back. I, I, I mean, that's just that's just the back of the back of the draft guy in my head immediately. Um, I don't understand yourself. That would be a guy that would want for me. It's worth worth thinking about. They have another pick very soon after that. Who knows? And it's not a bad pick, too. I mean, he's got good size. They probably trade out of that pick. That would be honest. <laughs> yeah, I think that. I think they're back to their old bullshit. Yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken. You have any more uh, fat guys to talk about? Hmm. Look at my fat guy list. No, <laughs> not really. I, I I tried to like analyze like guards and tackles. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. I'm like, yeah. he, he's good at pushing him. That's pretty cool. No, I mean, I just didn't. I I only really was interested in Braden Smith. Um, we kind of talked a little bit about our the top the best. Uh, you know, uh, Isaiah Wynn and Orlando Brown last week. So that was kind of the mm-hmm. only really offensive lineman I was really looking at and. The reason why is because we need to see the combine. This is where the O-linemen yeah. really help themselves out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean... Until I'm, then... Yeah, guys, like... I mean, I played I played offensive line in high school. Like, I'm not saying I'm some off the line. Did I. Play, but I, <laughs> but I, I know what to look for in these guys. I'm not some sort of... Definitely not my expertise, like, as far as, like, trying to figure out these guys, I think. Yeah, form can kind of go out the window when you're as athletic as these guys. But I gotta see these combine numbers and see what guys I gotta look at. And this, and that's the big thing about this combine. When it really reduces these guys down and gives you guys to focus on and watch tape on. Like, wow, this guy needs to move up my draft board. Right. Yeah. And like, I, I guess one guy, if I had to say, one guy I want to see is Willie Hernandez. Hmm. I just want I just want to see how just strictly because I want to see the numbers he'll put up against competition like this just because it's a smaller school and but yeah with with the combine with anything like that I really think that it comes down to with I'm sorry with any O lineman I have I, I have to watch I have to see the combine first to really kind of get into it because I barely have enough time to watch pretty good college receivers and quarterbacks and running backs I'm not gonna have time to watch a guard or a tackle. Mm-hmm. Like with with full with full knowledge and scope, but yeah, but that's it for my fat guy list. All right, so let's move on to the kind of fat guys on the other side of the ball. The fat guys who still get laid. These yeah. guys, the <laughs> not guys, weirdos, guys show up in the newspaper. <laughs> yeah, the not weird people. Yeah, we we'll, we'll get these weird people. Um, let's kick it off, man. I want to kick it off with a guy, uh, Kentavia Street. You guys mm-hmm. might have heard of him. You guys might not have. What school is he from? Um, he is from NC State, and he is six Great two. Job. What? Yeah, yeah. He's he was his interior lineman, man. I mean, he can also he can also play some DN too. They've said that he can kind of just do both. But he's a, he's unfortunately predicted as a seventh round or protected free agent. I don't know why, because this guy is a fucking animal. He's six two, two eighty five. He's predicted so in tw- twenty sixteen he ran a four point five eight forty. Wow. Uh-huh. Like, that is just mind-blowing to me. I don't understand how he's still not. Um, <clears throat> so, he and he bench. Size. I'm sorry? He needs more size to go up with that kept 40, so. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, you could use him down as a three-down three, three down technique. He has a 40-inch vertical. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, yeah, 40-inch vertical. His bench press is 475, and he squatted 700 pounds. This guy's a fucking freak. 
Wow. And I think if he just like shows up huge at the combine, he'll get he'll get that seventh round protected free agent thing taken away from him because he's a yeah. fucking animal. People will be talking about him if he's if he's putting oh, up yeah. the tops of everything. Absolutely. And again, too, they'll see the forty time. They'll see the forty inch vertical. That is fucking yeah. bananas. He's he's gonna get people when he's at the top performer in every single drill. He won't be a seventh round pick. I promise you that. No, I think he'll I think he'll stoop down to the four just because he was a seventh round, and you don't go from seventh to second I mean, just because. Could, of man. I mean, fucking Don Terry Poe, I'm sure was not not considered more than like a seven six. Yeah, no, that's true. He could. And I hope he does too. And I guess the only the only argument that people are using against him right now is that maybe he was like a product of Nick Chubb, but maybe maybe Nick Chubb had help from him. Yeah, I mean I mean fuck it. I mean we're not talking about the stats, we're talking about like athleticism and that's what we're about, not if he does that kind of stuff. Yeah, and like and that's an NFL coach's dream, man. He has these intangibles, he'll fuck you up. Mm-hmm. He's like an eagle. Or a bear. I don't know. What which North American bear has a forty inch vertical? I forget. <laughs> I don't I don't remember this from my or whatever class. I think it's a grizzly bear. I think so too. I think you're right. Is that, yeah, yeah. It's, I'm reading right now. They also bench 475 uh, at the I bear thought, combine. I thought it was higher than that, but I don't remember. Uh, no, you thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking right now. Yeah, man. I, I'm in love with this guy, and I hope I hope the Lions take him. Yeah, man. Uh, I can't blame you for wanting him there. Um, my defensive lineman is uh, Marcus Davenport. Uh, yeah, good pick. He is a guy that a lot of people are talking about. I don't think he's necessarily even a sleeper anymore. I think he's a guy, a guy who's gonna most likely be in the top half of the first round draft. But it's, I mean, being a guy from uh, UTSA and having uh, having some off field issues, I think he really needs to go out there and show that. He is a good of an athlete, as we all think he is. And if he really stunts, he could end up being a top 10 pick. If he doesn't show, he could drop uh, the first round because he wasn't all that impressive at the senior bowl, to be honest. Yeah, and like people don't want to take that risk on a small school, too. I mean, I know I've been saying this for pretty much every prospect from a small school, but if they don't, if they, if you don't have those numbers, teams are not going to want to take that risk. Mm-hmm. And he had good numbers when he was there, but like, I mean, no, no, combine numbers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, kind of, okay. But, like, yeah, like, nothing, he had, like, eight and a half sacks this senior year. Like, nothing crazy. But um, but he was a Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year. He was a really good player there. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a crazy athlete, though. I mean, I think he's going to be a perfect uh, 4-3 defensive end. He's, like, 6'6", 255. I really think uh, he could be, a, a like, a speed rusher from the 4-3 position, I think. There's been a lack of those tall defensive ends coming out recently. I don't think you see them as much as you'd like to. And I think that he's a guy that a lot of teams will be targeting. Um, for once, I don't think they necessarily be a type of guy the Giants are going after because we're switching to a 3 4. So, oh, yeah, that's um, right. So he, he wouldn't be good in a 3 4, though. Yeah, yeah, he'd be a pass rusher. Um, just shows, depends how fast he is, I guess. But um, I really see him more as a 4-3 defensive end. I do think he could be a 3-4 outside linebacker, but I don't think it's his uh, perfect fit. He'd be on the edge every time. Um, yeah. I, I like him, too. And I think I think also another thing, when I remember watching just a little bit of film here and there, I think what was cool about him is he can drop back into coverage and cover a tight end. Mm-hmm. He does have that propensity. So I think that makes him a little more uh, valuable. But again, he just needs to show that he can put up big boy numbers at the weights. His his obviously any of his agility drills, his forty drills, his vertical probably just to show his reach and how he can utilize his arms and forward thrusting power. Um, I know this isn't a physics class, but <clears throat> that's just what it is. I like him a lot. Um, do you have any NFL comparisons for him, or just like just just a team that you might think you could go to? Um, let's see. I could see a team like, uh, maybe the Dallas Cowboys taking them. Yeah, um, and they might lose a dip at the end. Yeah, hopefully for them they can hold on to Demarcus Lawrence, but 
they could use another pass rusher regardless. Uh, I mean, they do. They did just take uh, Taco Taco Charlton Taco, last Taco year. Taco Charlton, yeah, man. Taco 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 Taco. His, he was a first round consideration solely on his name. Yeah. They're like, we're going <laughs> fucking Taco, man. And they're he like, yeah, first we overall take... in the name draft. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad he got that honor. He deserved. <laughs> he deserved it. He deserved that very much. Um, <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> but, um, yeah. yeah. I, like him. I, I would have to sit down and kind of look at his uh, size compared to some other guys. But um, off the top of my head, maybe like a Chandler Jones. Okay, yeah. I, I can definitely see that just from hearing what you said about him. Um, yeah. And I, 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 you know, I think an NFL comparison, that was probably the wrong question for me to ask because – it's definitely mm-hmm. hard to see with these kind of four three techniques. Like they're all kind of the same, unless they're some are good, some are bad. It's one, one thing I wanted to bring up about NFL comparisons, I heard something real cool on. Uh, I think it was a it was like a basketball podcast that I was listening to, but I do think it a does. Yeah, it was like a late rival gang, dude. We can't, we can't do that. But uh, I did hear something that they said about comparisons that I do think does play here. They said that uh, one one guy who is a scout, his rule is you aren't allowed to compare a guy if they look alike. So like, if it's two like running backs with dreads, like <laughs> you don't, can't, don't compare them. You can't do like, that. We know why you're comparing them, and I, I think that rule goes with um with a lot of things. Like I hate when people. Pair people. Hello. All right, you there? Okay, yeah. All right, Chris, we're going to cue back in, try to make it work. I'll try to go in right where I was. But, yeah, you can't compare a guy if they look alike is basically what they go by. And I think that plays with schools, too. Like, if they're from the same school and they play the same position, I don't think that's, like, you shouldn't make those comparisons unless they're super clear. Like, I hate all of those comparisons because we know why you're making them. And that's something I'm going to try to instill more in my comparisons. And that's something I want, like, it's just, there are so many made because of that reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, I think too, like we were talking about this last week um, with Dallas Goddard and we were both like, I don't want to compare him to Gronk, but he's fucking Gronk. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> So. But it doesn't necessarily even look like Gronk. That's just that is an easy comparison. But like, for example, um, DJ Moore from Maryland, wide receiver. Have you heard of him at all? Nine, nine of any real substance. So he's he's an okay receiver. He's nothing special. He's from Maryland. You want to guess what his NFL comparison is? Um, I what's his height? Like like six foot. Like six foot, I'm gonna go. Do you you know the height or you know the comparison? Yeah. Um, AFC or NFC? NFC. NFC. Matt's an Iron Maryland wide receiver. Oh. Dare you say would pay? That's all I know. Maryland. Stephon Diggs. Oh, uh, I should I should know that. <laughs> I just let those like Stephon Diggs, you know, because he's. Because he's a fast guy from Maryland. Maryland. Like, no, he's a bad route runner. While Stephon Diggs is one of the best route runners in the NFL. Like, what are you trying to say? Well, I mean, Antonio Brown is still held that honor, but um, Stephon Diggs is up there, and Stephon Diggs is just a freak. He was a five-star recruit coming out of high school. That's insane to do that comparison. Like, I hate. Yeah. I mean, like I, I mean, people do that all the time, and they, people are doing that right now with Rashad Penny. To Donald Pumphrey, they're like, oh, yeah. well, he was. This. And 
to some respect, we do that with USC quarterbacks, and we're right, but and we people, shouldn't do it. Yeah, and people are doing it with, like, Josh Allen and, like, Carson Wentz because they both went to, like, Midwest small schools. And yeah, and tall, first of all. Tall and have a big arm. Yeah, they're both big. Yeah. They're, they're both tall people. They must be the same. All right, they're both different animals, too. I mean, I think Carson Wentz was a lot more NFL ready than Josh Allen was mm-hmm. coming into the draft. I mean, Carson Wentz clearly is pretty okay at football. Yeah. I don't think Josh Allen could do that in his second year or his third year. I think he needs time to develop as a QB. Or ever. <laughs> or ever, apparently, if you're an insane person. Um, <laughs> No, um, it's not that bad. Or to somebody who doesn't like Josh Allen. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to move on from that. That's just something I wanted to bring up. I, I wanted to mention to you, and I just never had a chance to. Um, but, yeah, just final thoughts on the on defensive linemen. Um, it's a really athletic position, just more athletic than every single year than we've like, ever seen. Um, look, look, for the ba- look for the 40, look for the bench, look at the bird. Look, all these positions. All of these are strengths to defensive linemen. There's no nothing there that you can't look at. Like they are supposed to be athletes across the board. So those are all things you can look at to try to find a diamond in the rough with these athletes. Yeah, and like I mean, honestly, the 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 combine is so important for lines. Mm-hmm. On both sides of the ball, this is where they fucking stunt on haters. They don't really have haters because so everyone doesn't know who they are. But like, um, this is where they kind of make their money. It's where they kind of solidify themselves in the draft. So I'm excited. I'm excited. I think they're good choices. But um, I'm actually excited about my next guy, my, my linebacker, actually. Yeah, so go ahead and say it. we got two more position groups left. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get through them. What do you got? Yeah, let's knock it out here. Um, because we're going to go with a high school state power lifter, 6A, double-time champion. I know it was two-time champion. I just messed that up. But um, <laughs> Jannard Avery out of Memphis. That's my second Memphis player on this podcast. So if you guys want to give me a full scholarship, I don't know. I don't know how this works. But I'll call the deans or something. Um, anyway, yeah. Paxton Lynch or something. What's that? Hang out with Paxton Lynch or something. I'm sure I'm sure he's doing the same amount of NFL prep for his this coming season as I am. So I'm sure he's not too busy. Uh, um, I'll, I'll let him know I want to hang out. Though. <laughs> um, so, Jannard Avery, dude. The first thing was, I was I, I was reading, I was like, who can I put against my linebacker guy? Because linebackers are so versatile. They're so utilized. Um, and then someone was... Uh, Writing about they're like, oh, well, this guy was a power lifter. I'm like, that doesn't mean he was good. And his numbers are fucking awesome, dude. 22 tackles for a loss th- just this year. Wow. Yeah, dude. Well, that- tackles for a loss. The linebacker, that's more important to me than that. Oh, yeah. You know what it shows, though? You know what that shows in his strength? He can just beat people to the fucking ball. Like, mm-hmm. he will just maul you down. Um, uh, but, and also, too, he's supposed to run around like a 4 6, like 4 5 area. If wow. he can do that, I with, mean, with some incredible strength, I don't need to see his bench if he's a power lifter. I don't give a fuck about that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, that's exactly. What I was like, I was trying to find like his powerlifting numbers and what it was. He was a power. He was a champion powerlifter, and he had twenty-two tackles for a loss. That's not just a stat. That just shows how well he can break away from a defender. He, he the combine, he does. It. I'm sorry. Do you have his size on you, like his weight and height? Uh, yeah, I do actually have it on me, but I was just getting a little more into this guy. Yeah, go ahead. For it. Um, so I think what right now he's being kind of undervalued right now, and I think that's mostly because of the Memphis, uh, kind of the Memphis connection. But I think after a while he will become more valued as a player. I mean, you just look at twenty-two tackles for a loss. That's just a big thing. Um, for sure. I think if if he can produce, and I know one of the things is everyone's like, well, if he can really show in the forty, I don't think the forty is that important. I think if he just kind of shows his agility and that his 40 is consistently good. Um, but I think he can really make his way. He's supposed to be like a seventh, sixth, seventh rounder. I think he can push his way down to the fourth or fifth. I mean, we all know how good it is to have those rotating linebacker cores, especially someone who knows how to get to the ball and is seemingly very fast. So um, in size and numbers, he's 6'1", 260 pounds. Wow. Yeah, Good he's linebacker. a he's a fucking freak. Maybe a week, maybe like a weak side, but like he's 
at the height, the height's a little worrisome, but I mean, he definitely has that weight. And he's got, he's got, and he can throw it around too. He doesn't mind slugging it. Yeah. Um. This, yeah. Just other notes about him. I mean, he comes from a good athletic family. He's a four-time starter, so he's never been. He's always been a consistent contributor to his team. Um, yeah, and in high school he had like eight tackles for a loss in one game. Wow. I know it's just high school, but still. Yeah. All right. Wow. Well, that's well, I mean, learn something, something new, man. That's, that's new every day. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, my guy is uh, Malik Jefferson out yeah. of Texas. So everything I've seen about this guy is he is a freak athlete. Um, he's six three two forty, and people are saying that he's going to be running like a low four four. Ah, that's good. That's yeah, really he, good. he'd be a freak athlete. Um, he's just going to blow people away with his athleticism, I think, and I think that could really bring him up in this draft. But at the same time, he's a little worried about his instincts. He sometimes he he'll miss tackles. He doesn't necessarily have a nose for the ball, and a lot of people have him listed as a middle linebacker. What I say is, now fuck that dude. Don't put him at middle linebacker. If he has this athleticism, yeah, stick, stick, you know I mean, six three two forty. Stick him on, stick him as an edge rusher, and just let him get after the ball. He has that kind of athleticism. Let, let yeah, him, absolutely. And let I mean, let him be like a three four outside linebacker and just go after it. Yeah, and that's that's where you just should utilize him too. And uh, what what is his round projection? If you have that on you, um, I think it's around like two three. Okay, so do you think? I'm thinking if he proves well, what are the two biggest drills for him that he needs to solidify that draft position? 40 is going to be something that they're going to be, you know, like important or not. Like you can make that argument all day. I always think three cone shuttles really show football speed more, but people love looking at the 40. I think 40 is a big one. Um, I'd say vert jump would be the other one. What's up? Vertical jump. Oh, vertical jump. Okay, just 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 throw his athleticism and big push kind of move. I mean, those are always the kind of two numbers that really go the eye pop for uh, people. I feel like I feel like that's gonna bring him up the draft board. If he has some crazy numbers there, people are gonna want to get him. I can see him having the type of uh, rise up the board as it's slipping my mind right now. His name, uh, the linebacker out of. Uh, Temple last year. Oh, why am I forgetting it now? But I literally, right. I was, right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I was going to say Isaiah Rick, but. Yeah, I, I, Hassan Rick. I could see him having that type of uh, rise. I think Hassan Riddick had a better instinct. He's to safety and stuff like that. But, yeah. um, I mean, he was an All American high school. I mean, I think that people can teach him that type of stuff. But again, like I said, just stick him as the outside linebacker and let him get after people. I think he has crazy. Athleticism. He had 110 tackles this year, 10 tackles for a loss. I mean, he's a very good player, and that's with missing tackles. Um, I would love to see what, what kind of numbers he's going to bring. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so one other guy I wanted to mention, uh, just aside from him, that I'm really excited to see is uh, Leighton Vanderush. He's the linebacker from yeah Mountain West Player of the Year, baby. Yeah, from uh, Boise State. He's, Absolutely. He's the kind of guy that I mean, you know, that's a white guy. He's not, you don't expect him to do, be athletic. I don't know if he's athletic, to be honest. Like, as a white guy, he just always looks lower to me. <laughs> um, <You're> racist. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> but, um, it's technically, but <laughs> but um, he had 141 tackles this year on tape. He looks crazy, man. He is he is explosive. He really just drives through tackles. I think he's a great player. I think he's very instinctual. If he can go out there and show that he is also a good athlete, I think he could he could be a, like a top pick. I think he could end up being. I don't want to put him over the two top linebackers, but I'd yeah. say for the right, for the right team, he could be. Yeah, I mean it's contingent on the fit too, and I think with a guy like him, I mean, as a zero-star walk-on, and now he is being at the NFL Combine. He had great numbers. Now West Player of the Year, man. 
mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to see how hard he will work to get on an NFL team. Yeah, I mean, I think he'll be. I think he could be a first round pick, and I think with a good enough combine, he could find himself in the top half for sure. Not like uh, a late uh, first round, not like a safer first round pick. Yeah, like I didn't think it's a stretch. I think if he, ha- if he has a good, like a good combine, I'm talking like great, but a good one. Like he is one of the top top performers and all and all these types yeah. of things. Like top five, top, top ten, five. and a couple, a top five and a lot. I can see him fall into first half of the first round. Like he needs to show show up. But it's interesting, just, man. Interesting. I just very instinctual. I think a lot of people are gonna fall in love with this tape, fall in love with the story, fall in love with this leadership. Oh, everyone loves that. Everyone loves you know, this nice little sleeper. I mean, know, white, the thing white is, guy traits. White guy traits, yeah. <laughs> Rudy traits. Jim, Jim, Jim Rat. Coach, coach his kid. <laughs> gritty. Very gritty. Bring him home to your mom and dad. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. This guy, he kind of reminds me of, I don't know if I'm just being racist here. kind of reminds me of Tyler Matthew. I think I'm being racist, but he kind of reminds me of this guy I saw today in the mirror when I woke up. I think I think it's me. I see myself in him a lot. Like, yeah. Wow. I'm like, is that, is that me out there? But, if, you were, um, if he was a midget. Yeah, you know, if he was a midget. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I am 5'10", sir. It is, it is confirmed by my last doctor's appointment that I am. Nope, 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 nope. The doctor was nice, and he said that you're 5'10", son. Yeah, I was wearing shoes, so what? <laughs> I don't care. Drew Brees is 5'9". I don't think that that's true. I think he's like 6'1". Six, 6'1". One. Six, one. I think me and Drew Brees are the same height, so I shouldn't yeah. have a quarterback. No, you shouldn't be a quarterback at all. <laughs> all right. So, um, do you have any more linebackers you want to talk about, or should we move on to defensive backs? No, I think we have covered uh, our linebackers enough. Um, the next guy, uh, is it okay if I tap into him? Hi, Muffin. How you doing, Bubba? Um, sorry, that's my dog. Um, shout out to my dog. She's having a bad day. She, <laughs> she's on dry food right now. She literally has not eaten all day. This is her, the worst day of her fucking life. <laughs> um, she is having the worst fucking day. Yeah, yeah. That's her sulking. This is this is great podcast stuff. It is. It is because <laughs> you can see her. <laughs> um, anyway, so the guy is Dante Jackson. Um, not to be confused with the movie star Samuel L. Jackson, but Dante Jackson is a cornerback from LSU who was a track lead. He was a sprinter, and he could be predicted to break the 4.24. That is a a hot take prediction from him. He is, like, insanely fast. So in the 100-meter dash, do you want to guess his time in the 100-meter dash? Because I don't even... You don't? Okay. (laughs) I didn't know it. So it was a really low low number. Uh, It's the number after 9 and before 11. Um, He ran a 10.22 in the 100-meter dash. I think he'll just fucking wreck it at the 40-yard. Uh, I think that's going to drop him down because he's he's considered about being a second-round pick, first, second-round pick. Raise I think if up. he... What's up? Raise him up. All right. He will be closer <laughs> to the first overall... He'll be closer <laughs> to the first overall pick than he was... Never mind. He's going to raise his draft stock a little bit. But it's gonna it's gonna take him out of the second round consideration and into the first round consideration if he does well at the forty, which I think he will. And we just we're talking about it for John Ross. That got him where he was last year, breaking that record. If this dude breaks the record, absolutely. And the guy's five eleven, one seventy five, so he should have no problem having a good vertical too, by the way. So I'm looking forward to him kind of sneak into the first round. I'm thinking he can go as low as ten. Mm-hmm. With a good kind of line. All right. So he's a fast, fast dude, and of course everyone loves that forty. Not that, yeah. especially in defensive backs. I mean, we've seen it before. Um, Justin Gilbert found himself in the top ten because of his, because of his uh, because of his forty. I do think yeah. people love it. I mean, at the very least, a guy like that you can put, like, especially fast defensive players, you can put those guys in special teams and just get them down on punts. Like, yeah, absolutely. They, there's a floor for these guys, at the very least. Like that, they're already good cover see. corners, mm-hmm. and they have that speed. Yeah, I'll take that guy. Exactly. Um, so my guy, very obvious. You know, cue the booze. Cue it up, Chris. Uh, yeah, <laughs> give those booze. 
but uh, Denzel Ward from Ohio State. Uh, yes, I know, I know. Uh, the, the number one cornerback in the draft. Yeah, so uh, he's going to have a good combine. No fucking shit. <laughs> Ohio State. Fucking Michigan fans. Um, Those guys. But... I mean, first of all, we all know Ohio State isn't putting out good corners after good corners, you know, except for that fuck Eli Apple. He's a little fucking pussy. Um, <laughs> the uh, one the one bad one. Was yeah, the one good. bad one the Giants got just because he's a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Mar- but uh, he, Denzel Ward, was very good this year. Um, you know, he wasn't as special as some of the corners we've seen in the past. Um, a lot of people are saying that there's no true, like, number one, like, great corner in this draft. And that's why I do think this is going to help him because there's, people have tr- been trying to set that apart. And Denzel Ward at the end of the year started to set himself apart a little bit. But I heard a quote by Marshawn Lattimore that he said that uh, – that Denzel Ward it was faster than him when he was at Ohio State, and Lattimore is fast, man. He ran a four fast three six. He ran a four <laughs> three six a comma. And if Denzel Ward, a little than but yeah. <laughs> Denzel Ward, if he runs out there and gets like a four two eight at his caliber of cornerback, he could find himself in the top ten. And yeah, and rightfully so. I think it's warranted. I really do, and I think that um. I think that's much more warranted when Justin Gilbert got knocked up there. I think uh, Denzel Ward is going to be a good NFL corner. Maybe great. I don't know. We'll see. He uh, he was a, a long jumper in high school. He, he was on the track team. He's a very, very fast guy, very athletic. Um, his NFL comparison right now is Chris Harris Jr., which is about one of the best corners in the league. So, yeah, all right, yeah. So, I would, I just really think that a big forty for this guy could put could put him into the top ten. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And we just talked about how how valued, maybe overvalued, maybe undervalued the forty is. And but I mean, it does show his propensity to be a special teamer, to be an immediate contributor, and also it's a guy you don't mind having on the field as well. Like you can have him on the field for defensive snaps if he's maybe he's not the top corner, but he can be on the field for you just because of his speed, and you've seen he can already cover pretty well. So you have yeah. no problem integrating him and assimilating him into your defensive system. Yeah, with all these speedy guys in the NFL, you want some guys who can cover. I mean, I mean that was a big plus why Marshawn Lattimore was so successful yeah. this year. He had the speed to cover. Absolutely, and it's like well with. I think it's a little different with cornerbacks too. When when we see speed on a wide receiver, I think that's where it's really, really overshot of how mm-hmm. valuable it is. I don't think it's that crazy because we see fast receivers all the time. Darius Hayward yeah. Bay, what has he done? I mean, it, it is important to an extent, but you don't need to have the breaking speed. I mean, there's guys like somebody I actually should have mentioned where a wide receiver, like Corton Sutton. Like, people, he's a freak right now in college. People are talking about him as, like, a Calvin Johnson type. But, I mean, he needs to come out here and run an OK40. Because, I mean, if he comes out here, people are talking about him not running the 40 at one point. I I heard he is, so that would be good. But, I mean, stupid not to run the 40 because then it's like, okay, so you run, like, a 4.6. Oh, good to know. Like Yeah. Yeah, and it's, like, it's a very valued number. And it's, like, just run the 40, especially as a receiver, dude. Yeah, wide receiver, you just, you just need to you need to have enough speed. Maybe there's some guys like Tyreek Hill who can be special, but there's guys like Tavon Austin, Darius say we're bad, it doesn't matter for. So, but when you're a big guy, like you need to show you have enough speed to separate. Otherwise, you end up like look one trend well. Yeah. <laughs> and also too, I mean, everyone you can look at like, oh, well, this receiver is there is a guy who played for Army who is six eight. And mm-hmm. I remember a bunch of people were like, I don't know how he's not getting any consideration. I'm like, because he's slow as fucking shit. Yeah, like, he can't, like, that doesn't, like, a corner can reach up and, like, disrupt his process. Corners so are getting need bigger, bigger and faster. I mean, get, granted, uh, granted, uh, Ward is only 5'10". He's not, he's not a big guy, but he's fast. 
not yeah, terrible. It's not awful. He's definitely not have doesn't have the ideal size, but it's enough. But um, that's good for a corner, though. I mean, I think the I think the healthy size is like five eleven, five eleven to six foot. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, with that speed too, I think that's also a, con- fact, a contributing factor too, because it's also always different kind of corners. I mean, you don't want a cornerback who's like six five. Hey, we'll do. see how we see how he jumps. It doesn't matter how tall he is. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Jump up for the ball, and um, yeah, that's pretty much all you can really wait for. Wait for the forty, and wait for the verticals. Yeah, man. Well, you have any more defensive backs, or we good for for that? No, we can go to kickers. Oh, kickers? Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, good. I, oh, I, have, I have a ton of those prepared. Yeah, this is this is where the real meat starts getting in this podcast, guys. We're going to start talking about guys like Justin Yoon. Yeah, so, um, if you guys aren't kickers, Korea, I'm sorry. you can I'm tune out listen. now because we're about to start. So, yeah, this is going to be like, left. <laughs> this is like a five-hour segment now. <laughs> we're talking about college kickers. All right, guys. Well, I... I'm, I, ho- I hope you all are. I'm very excited for this combine. Merry combine. Yep. Hope I uh, hope we uh, see another uh, player's dick fall his pants. That would be very entertaining. That would be very entertaining. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> happen once. Hope it happens again. <laughs> I think I think we're down. You know, down for a repeat. Maybe. You know, we don't want to not have it happen. It would it'd be a combine gift. I all think right, this yeah. is our first night. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we'll talk to you next week. Recap the combine and uh, at least rebuild the Giants. We'll see what else. Yep, that's right, man. Good, good shit. How's it going?